So with PCI, there's a virtual PCI bus, and, and the guest sees, or, uh, sees the card on that bus. And so there are mechanisms that we need to be considered with how the QMU side of this problem works. So for platform devices, how are we going to do that? But generally, this is how QMU uses the VFIO. Okay, I have a couple slides I want to uh, show you that just, just make sure everyone's on the same page with some terminology and so on. So Linux has a, a driver model, and it's fairly simple, but there, there's constant bus, and attached to the bus you have devices and drivers. And so, for example, this is a PCI example. You have PCI devices that um, when they are discovered, they would get registered with a PCI bus, and then Drivers register themselves to handle certain device types. And then the association of a driver to a device is called binding. And so you'll see that's kind of an important concept here with BFIO and, and how things are bound and unbound. Okay, so just an example of how BFIO PCI works. Um, if you want to pass through any 1,000 card, and I guess I've cut and pasted example from Alex's um, VFIO.tax documentation. Um, here's an E1000 card, um, bus fit, device D, um, that you want to pass through. So the, the first thing you have to do is unbind the device from the host driver so that the host is, will leave it alone and it just hands off of it. So you do that through SysFS by echoing the device to the unbind um, file that driver. That's step one. And then next you echo, this is the device type. So this is, a, I think, an E1000 card. You echo the device type into SysFS, and there's a special file called new ID under the uh, VFIO PCI driver. So the VFIO PCI is just a standard PCI driver. But by default, it doesn't, it's not set up to handle any devices at all, because we don't know what devices we're going to be passing through. It could be an E1000 card. It could be something else, a static controller. So the new ID mechanism lets you tell the driver you're now handling this type of this device ID. So essentially, the VFIO functions as a meta driver. You can bind any device type to it. And the way you tell it what, what types it supports is through the SysFS mechanism. So that's the way, um, that's the way it works. You unbind, you bind it, and at this point here now, um, VFIO owns the device and can expose it to user space through file descriptors. Okay, so what we're trying to do now is pass some non-PCI devices to user space. And you know, a system on its chip. So this is an example of a Freescale SOC. Um, you're going to see this as a common architecture where you're going to have your cores, some kind of interconnect, coherency interconnect, you know, and various bits of I.O. Um, you know, you have a DDR controller, but you'll have you know, a huge variety of different I.O. devices that could be handling sitting on this interconnect. And what we're going to do is allow, allow some of these devices to be passed through the user space through, through this mechanism. Um, let's see. Say there. I guess I think today it's, it's kind of a point of interest for both power architecture and ARM. I think we're we're dealing with embedded systems where um, you know customers are interested in doing this. In fact, at Freescale, very first project we did was KVM. It's working with a customer. The thing they wanted to do was pass a network device to a virtual machine. This was on a system that didn't have an IOMU or any protection, but they just had a use case where they wanted to have a trusted RTOS running in a VM with a direct assigned device. And so probably three years ago, for the, you know, we kind of dealt with this problem and started then with just kind of a hacked up solution that we, we got working. Um, but definitely a requirement we see um, in the embedded space. Okay, so, so I guess one, one point here is you'll see so these devices are not sitting on a PCI bus. And so they, they can't be discovered via hardware mechanisms like with PCI. They're fixed addresses, and um, typically Linux is told by a device tree, at least on power. Um, 
what devices exist. So that's the way that um, these devices are discovered. And then there's a bus type of Linux called the Platform Bus, standard Linux bus, but it is it's used for devices like we're talking about that can't be discovered as part of mechanisms. So um, that's what we're going to find the devices that we're interested in here is on, on the platform bus. Okay, so the existing mechanisms in VFIO, which again, we're exposing mappable regions, registers of devices and interrupts and providing DMA mappings. Uh, those are kind of the three key things we're, we're providing to user space. The existing mechanisms work, and we don't have to re-architect anything or change fundamental concepts in DFIO. Um, they, they work as it is for, for platform devices, um, the IO control interfaces, and so on. But there are a small hand few, handful of issues that do need to be addressed, and that's what I want to focus on in the rest of the talk here. One point, um, our current vision of you know, VFI for platform devices is not that we are going to solve the problem for all platform devices in kind of a um, kind of in a single way. There are there are complicated devices that you make it make it problematic. Like an example, it's common that on, on a freescale networking chip with a with an Ethernet interface that there can be associated phi with this network interface. That phi may be managed through some kind of uh, interface over here. And so you're going to have potentially weird entanglements between devices. I mean, it's, some devices are kind of cleanly isolated where it's a standalone device with no connection with other devices. But as, you, as you'll see on some SOCs, um, the, the connections between devices can get very convoluted sometimes. And so, um, if you have a device with weird entanglements that isn't kind of self-contained, it's going to be very problematic to pass that through in a clean way to user space. And so we're not um, with one mechanism trying to solve that problem. There's going to probably be the device specific aspects for, for some devices like that. But, um, but for the basic idea of exposing a device's resources to user space, um, you know, it's, it's definitely doable and it's useful. Okay, so here's an example of a, of a platform device. Um, this is a serial port. This is the device tree representation for, uh, for the device, and you'll see it's fairly simple. There's a, a one page of register on it, and there's one interrupt associated with the device. Um, that's a simple device, and pretty would be pretty straightforward. I mean, it doesn't even do DMA, but pretty straightforward as far as um, passing that through. So, so there are a couple steps here. So just like with PCI, we, the first thing we need to do, and, and I guess this is an I2C example here, the first thing we have to do is unbind the device from the host driver. So you do that, just like on PCI, by echoing um, the platform device ID into a sysfs. Um, if you look under, for example, sysbus devices, you'll see that as a, as a device. So you unbind, and then, like on PCI, we're, we're, we want to now bind this device, this specific device, to a new proposed driver called VFIO platform. Okay, so at this point, there are a couple problems um, that, we, that we run into. I mean, this is what we want to do. First, um, the platform bus doesn't have any kind of wildcard mechanism that would let us just bind any device to it because the, the platform the platform driver here registers for specific device types. And you, when you write your driver, you say, I handle a, a list of device types, and that's, that's all you handle. There's no way to say I handle any device, for example. So one, one mechanism we need is a way to introduce a wild, like a wildcard saying any device. Because Again, DFIO is kind of a meta driver in a sense, and that is, it's really handling many device types or any device type that you want. 
So that's one issue and one problem with it, one problem to solve. <clears throat> the other issue is that we want we want the VFIO platform driver to, to really only bind to devices when explicitly requested to. If all we have is the wild carding mechanism, what would happen is now we would have an ITC driver and a VFIO driver that can potentially bind to the same device. And so and it's ambiguous which one would get it. So what we want so what we want is this driver to only bind to the device when explicitly requested to via SysFS. And uh, the Linux driver core today does not support that. Um, so there's a, so the, to deal with the situation here, um, we, we, need, we need some changes to the, to the kernel. And actually, PCI can use this as well, if I have a PCI. Um, they, they face the same issue um, where potentially you bind the device to VFIO, and now you have an E1000 driver and a VFIO driver both claiming to handle E1000 cards. The hot plug event happens. Um, it's kind of a race condition as it's going to grab the device. So. OK, so the platform bus wildcard issue, pretty straight. This is pretty much the patch needed to solve that issue. Um, there's a patch posted, you can see here if you're interested, but essentially we need a new, a new flag in the platform device struct that um, a driver can set that says, I work with any device, and then um, we just need to check that. So it's a pretty simple patch to allow platform devices to essentially handle any device through wild carding. To solve the other issue, uh, there's a new flag we're proposing um, now, this is not a complete patch, but in, in the generic device driver struct, um, we want to add a new field, a new Boolean that says this driver only binds to SFS, and um, then there's a check needed in the driver core to um, support that. So a patch is posted. I'm not sure if Greg um, is going to, if he's going for it or not, but if anybody knows Greg, you know, can convince them that it's a it's a simple good idea. Uh, we'll see, but um, but we have we have a prototype working. Kim Phillip implemented it. And it worked. It seems to be working pretty well. Okay. Um, another problem, another race condition that exists. Theoretically, existing system that we think should be addressed is, as we talked about before, you, know, you unbind a driver, under unbind the device and driver at the beginning of this process. So the thing that can happen is, if you do the unbind, um, right then, I guess you, you're kind of faced where a hot plug event that happened right then could just come around and the, and the driver could grab the device again before you even have a chance to bind it to the FIO. So there's I mean, slightly separate from what we talked about, this issue of just a little small window of opportunity where you could um, unbind a device and then find and discover that it was already bound back to the host driver. So the proposal there is we don't have a patch for this yet, but the general idea is adding a new, a new field um, that means explicit bind only. And so the way it would work is before unbinding the device, you would you, you could echo a Boolean value to the device. So this is a, a device level field that would, would tell the from the device side of things that this, this device now should be SysFS bound only. And at that point, when you do the unbind, you won't have any risk of losing the device back to the host driver. Okay, and I guess the last issue I wanted to focus on a bit was talking about a little more complicated device. This is an example of a, of a freescale DMA engine. Again, device tree representation. Here you can see there are essentially three regions and, and two interrupts involved. There are two, D, two different DMA channels, each with their own interrupt, um, each with a different register set. And I guess the problem is, is when you pass this through the user space, the user space will recruit the FIO and say, okay, I have three regions and two interrupts. 
there's no way to really correlate for you to like to correlate the two interrupts to which channel is which. If there's not really any information that, that will tell user space that interrupt zero, the first interrupt is this channel, and that the second one is this channel. So same with the regions. Um, there's so the thing we need is for, for complicated devices that are actually represented by multiple nodes, is we need the ability to differentiate between the resources and which interrupt is which and so on. So the there is an RSC posted at the URL here if you're interested in reading it. Um, and the general idea is we're extending a couple of the IO control calls to get regions and get IRQ info with some additional class. Um, and the way it would, way it would work is if the flags are present in the main um, BFIO struct, it means there's an appended struct to the original struct. And that appended struct would have differentiation information. Specifically, it would have the, the full path to the, um, to the resource so that user space can tell the difference. So that's the idea is that in order for differentiation, for user space, there are some extensions to the existing IO controls um, to do that. side. So now we want to take this device and pass it to the machine. Um, Current thing here is that in QMU you're going to have, you're going to have device specific driver essentially to handle this. So like in the case of the DMA engine, when we start QMU, we're going to have a specific um, device emulation for the DMA, for the Freescale DMA engine and then we'll pass in some kind of path to identify which device we're talking about. But this driver, QMU, will have the specific ability to know how to generate a device tree for that device because there's things like that. Like, well, because we have to present the device to the guest in a standard way so that the guest looks like a standard um, hardware node. So we have to generate that information. And so um, that's going to be device specific. So that's it. Um, I, I mean, if you have any questions, we have to answer it. But I um, wanted to outline our thinking for, for these types of devices. And um, 